Ahoy shipmates! Today I'm going to do a little tutorial on tartan. I'm going to use these front rank miniatures from Brithian Beast. So they're Highlanders, obviously, and Napoleonic ones. Um, I'm loosely basing the um, tartan on a 73rd Perthshire. So it's quite a complicated tartan. So what I've did I've done this little uh, widgety thing here to work out the colour scheme for you. And the only difference is the square the square sizes but on the smaller miniatures that's not going to be so predominant and the other thing is where there's folds that's going to help you get away with a lot of stuff as well. So welcome to the video, um, and it's going to be fun and games playing in lines. All I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the rest of the miniature blank for a minute. Um, we do the tartan, and then off video I'll finish them up and put them as stills at the end. I'll do a still of this little sheet at the end as well, and obviously the paints. Right, with that said, I'll see you in a minute when we get going. So first up, we're going to use some dark sky. Mm. My wet palette's a little bit wet today. Never mind. Yeah. I'll crack on. I've started using this uh, Kalinsky Masterclass brush. And it's good. It's a good brush. So I popped into. Griffin Beast and went through their brushes and thought, ah, it's been a while since I tried the Kalinsky one. I'll have another go. Okay, so I'm going to keep this blue. As you see, we've Zenith 4 highlighted with the uh, Vallejo as usual. And I'm going to do a real transparent coat of this blue. So we're going to get some of that undershading through as well. If I was painting these normally, I'd probably uh, paint this blue in, paint the rest of the miniature, and then go back and do the tartan. Just because that's the way I roll. But yeah. Let's see, it's a nice, thin. I'm not going to let any of the too much of it pull up in the things. The good thing about this Kalinsky brush is the paint does flow really well off of it. I'll just take a little bit more looking after because they're dearer. Okay, so that's the first one. I'll come back when we've done the others. See you in a sec. Okay, so that's the boob done. As you can see, now it's dried. Where I've done that thin transparent coat, the we've got lots of free shading and we love free shading. That's because of our xenophon. Okay, so that's that first block. So next block we're gonna put some green squares in it. Uh, green lines. So if you think about your setting up basically the pattern for the rest of the tarn here. So brush-wise, you can either use anything that's got a really nice tip. So I've used this Kalinsky for about a week now. So it's holding up pretty well. And Or if you're not so sure, you go with something like the Psycho. Which is our old favourite for the eyeballs, etc. I'm going to stick the Kalinsky for this. This is the bigger green line. So, we're going to lock our hands into the bench, and we're going to build that thick green line, but we're going to do it with, we're going to thin our paint a little bit. Maybe a bit thicker. Mm. 
the swirl of the these are quite pleated these ones so you have to kind of improvise a little bit down first I say the more pleats and the more detail of them swishing about there is the more you're gonna get away with not being a perfect iron because you're gonna be painting kind of little odd bits of tartan that you'll be able to see but just bear in mind what I've done on the squares there and use them as a guide so that's the downward ones, not incredibly defined yet. So now I'm going to go round, I'm looking for leaving a blue square the same size as the square I'm creating with the green, if that makes sense. So these are going to be quite thick, these green lines. That's good, good practice. We almost want the... Uh, your hands set up and almost drag your brush across. If you do use the side coat, it's going to be it take at this point. I think you'll, you'll struggle. So it's one, I'm going to do one going around higher up. Okay. It's a little bit of a mess at the moment, but I think you get the idea. Okay, I'll do the rest and I'll be back. So, let's grab one of these other ones for sure. So basically, a better way to put that green is where it go down, so we're forming a stripey kilt so the green's nearly as wide as the blue as we can see and then we're putting two bars going across to form start making those squares so that's our two so now we go to three i'm going to black line it now this is a job for mr psycho And we would put a blob of I like it so it's nice and loose. So I've just got a little brush full. And we're just gonna start laying down these lines. So we're in a those green lines. Now as thin as you can make that. Because you've got the curves on the on the kill, you won't be able to pick them all out. But as long as there's a couple that are double sided like that, that you'll get the effect overall effect will work. can adapt this this way of doing it you can simplify it have a look online there's loads of resources for pictures on their Google images pick the one you want to have a go at I would draw it out first, like I did. If you've got any pencil crayons, that's the way forward. There we 
looking for that little tram line going on. So it's not going to be perfect because the kilt's moving. As long as there's enough pattern for your eyeball to pick up on, the overall effect will work. So nothing's perfect because you can't you're not gonna get it perfect like you're on the paper. But use this as a guideline to what you're doing. Right, I'm gonna go and put the lines on the rest. And uh we'll see you in a minute. Yep, yeah, so I've been over. As you see I've put the more defining black lines on. And my faithful staffy companions snoring like a good one. Obviously riveted to the latest Pirate Ridge Paints video. He subscribed. And he's hit the like button. Okay, so next. Stage four. We do these light uh, green bits. So all the cross sections that we've done on the green. I'm just going to pick out this this lighter green. Oh, that was a bit out of uh, focus then. Let's get him in. There we go. Why is he's obviously dreaming in motorcycle today? So I'll just work rounds like on the other stages. We're just looking for any use pronounce it in the sessions and keeping this lighter colour in between. So. Just keep working around. That's the first one done. So I'll crack on and do the others and I'll see you in a minute. So that was our highlighted intersections. So next we're going to do red and yellow. Well, we'll do the red first because I should have done another box really for the yellow. So the red. The red is going to go through the green cross hatch right down the center. So this is going to be a challenging one. Again, we're going to use our psycho brush, lock everything off, load up our brush. Very carefully. There you are, all our downwards ones first. So I'm looking for all those little ones. I've just put that lighter green on. It's all about scale. So really at this scale, you probably, from a distance, not going to see the red very much so don't go put in two thicker red lines on almost hinting at the red being there keeping the little psycho nice and wet aiming to get down that in the sections
where you keep the line nice and thin. It's not to do, it's more to do with the, what you're doing than what the brush is. You'll do this with the Kalinsky, anything with a nice point on. Because the points were the same size. It's the amount of paint they hold. So, where this doesn't hold an awful lot of paint, it dries out quite quick, which, hence I keep it wet. I'm going to go around the other way. Locking everything off. I'm, I'm as much turning the miniature as I am moving the paintbrush. So I just want the thinnest of the little red lines. And the way to do that is to keep the keep it on point. And keep your touch as light as you can. doesn't matter if the line breaks a little bit you actually want it to as it goes over the, the folds that red's gonna disappear if you put a completely full line it's gonna look weird okay that makes sense to you so I'll be back in a minute so obviously we've put the red on, some of it's a little bit thicker, some of it's thin, but as long as it's from a distance it gives you a slight appearance of red, being red lines there, I think it works. Next would be our box number six, which is the yellow. As we see the red goes down the green squares, Yeah, the yellow goes in between, so it's, you're looking for the blue boxes. That makes sense. I think it does. It's a demonomic yellow. So we're looking to go down the blue square this time. Okay. I'm going to even. Oh, I don't think that was in focus there, sorry. So you're never going to get a complete line. Oh dear. I've changed the settings on my... Uh, camera so I'm sorry if I've gone out of focus at all today it's easy when you're doing the other kind of videos but when you're full on concentrating you know, it's hard to take your eyes up and down so that's me putting some of the yellow lines going downwards going to cross now so that we're going in Right on the top, there we go. So you have it. Okay, what I'll do is I'll get the rest finished. 
and then I'll finish painting them all together. Get them in the light box for you like I usually do. Yeah, which paints I used, etc, etc. And I'll take a still and put it on the end of that little painting guide. But the takeaway point of this, guys, is you can get as complicated and detailed as you like for this with that sort of working out as a plan, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be complete lines, you can almost suggest there's a line just by putting it as far as it wants to go. And don't force this. If you start forcing it, you're gonna get into a whole world of uh, pain. As I said, this was quite a complicated pattern to put on such a small miniature. From hopefully from the tabletop distance away, you, you're thinking of looking at miniatures from sort of three feet away, aren't you? When you're gaming, these aren't. I'm not painting these to be cabinet pieces. If I was, I'd probably it slightly different. But this is kind of a happy medium. So I hope this has been helpful. I know a few of you, especially on our live vids, have been asking about tartan. So, there we have it. I'm just going to carry on painting now. Then, uh, get these guys finished. Okay, and thanks for joining us, guys. I hope that helped. Um, like, subscribe, all that groovy stuff. And then I'll be back soon with a new video. Okay, guys, thanks very much. See you next time.